Hey guys, peak flow is an important measure of lung function and it can be used to diagnose asthma or other respiratory problems. Beyond that, there is a correlation between higher scores and better cardiovascular fitness. The full name of the test is peak expiratory flow, expiratory meaning the out breath. It's measuring the highest speed at which you can empty air from your lungs. And you may be familiar with the peak flow meter if you've ever had this tested. The number you get from a peak flow meter is in liters of air per minute, which is a bit abstract, but later I'll show you some charts so you know what your score means. Measuring peak flow at home is very simple. The most common device is the MiniRite peak flow meter, which costs about 10 pounds. Try to avoid testing straight after exercise or a heavy meal, and you want to be doing it either sitting upright or ideally standing. You're going to relax, take a deep breath in, create a seal with your mouth around the outside of the tube, and then blow out as hard and fast as you can. The slider is going to move based on your breath, so make sure that you set it to zero before you start. Uh, there are digital meters available too. So just a quick example. So that is a score of around 700. Your score is then assessed based on your age, sex and height. Men tend to score better than women. Uh, if you're taller, you're also meant to score better and the peak age is 30 to 35. Uh, so here is the data table for men. I am 176 centimetres, so that's the central column here. I'm 36, so I'd want to be around 636 uh, and I'm comfortably above that. Here is the chart for women. Uh, apologies if your height or age isn't listed in either of these charts. For the same age and height, women are expected to score about 20 to 25% lower than men. If you are significantly below the normal value for your age, sex and height, it may be worth speaking to your GP. Otherwise, higher scores tend to mean that you have better and more efficient lungs and may reflect your cardiovascular fitness. Once you know your own personal baseline, it then becomes more important to compare your scores relative to that. Uh, this is especially true if you're monitoring a respiratory problem. I've measured myself for each of the last nine years and I tend to sit around 730. I'm not sure exactly what it is I did to score so well in 2015. For those with respiratory problems, it's common to measure yourself twice a day, once in the morning and again in the evening. The typical rule is that if you're scoring uh, less than 80% of your best, it could be cause for concern and might warrant speaking to your GP or asthma nurse. Using my example, even if we took my extreme value of 859, that would mean my score would need to be below 687 to be of concern. For healthy individuals at or above the normal value, measuring yourself once a year is sufficient, assuming you don't develop breathing related symptoms in the meantime. Thanks for watching.